This is Valley View News, and these are today's headlines. The feds say a Hollywood housewife was desperate to get her kid into college. I think I got a little baby on here. Ethan Hansen explores the impact of fishing on the environment, and therapy has turned into cuddles on campus. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Andrea Tanches. And I am Leslie Estrada. Uh, health officials are urging people who went through LAX last month to look for symptoms of measles because a traveler with the disease passed through the airport. People on the same flight as the passengers are being notified separately, but county health officials say anyone who was in Terminal B and Delta Terminal 3 between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. February 21st could be at risk of developing measles. Symptoms include fever, cough, runny nose, red eyes, and a rash. LA County says people who have not developed any symptoms by this week are no longer, longer considered at risk. More than 50 people were charged in the largest college admissions cheating scam in U.S. history. The U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts, Andrew Lee Lang, made the announcement in Boston. With, with participating in a conspiracy that involved first, cheating on college entrance exams, meaning the SAT and the ACT, and second, securing admission to elite colleges by bribing coaches. Actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin are among those charged. Also charged were the number of parents, college admissions officers, coaches, and exam administrators. Prosecutors say 33 parents paid $25 million to college admissions counselor William Singer. Singer allegedly arranged for their children to get into the college of their choice. Some of the colleges include Yale, Georgetown, USC, UCLA, Stanford, and the University of Texas. A few colleges assisted in the investigation. Some CSUN students say they were surprised to hear about the scandal. Um, I don't think it's fair for other students who work super hard to try to get into that school. At least 38 of those charged are in custody. Huffman was arrested at her home. Luffling is in Canada. She knows there's a warrant for her arrest. Meanwhile, Singer pleaded guilty to his charges. He is cooperating with authorities. Wells Fargo CEO Tim Sloan appeared before the House Financial Services Committee to answer questions about problems at the bank dating back in 2016, when employees opened as many as 3.5 million unauthorized accounts for unsuspecting customers. Sloan struggled to defend the bank's reputation against California's representative, Brad Sherman, who asked if the bank would allow those customers to sue. Will you let them go to court if that's what they want? Yes or no? We settled a 140. I'm asking for a yes or no, not a filibuster. That's the Senate side. You're supposed to, how, here, yes or no? Uh, Congressman, I, I've answered your question in terms No, of you haven't. Sloan claims he has spent the last two years trying to fix the bank's image, becoming the biggest corporate giver to charities and raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour for more than 200,000 employees. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District issued subpoenas to Deutsche Bank and Investors Bank. The records are related to four major Trump Organization projects and Trump's failed efforts to buy in Buffalo Bills in 2014. The deal fell apart when the team was sold to a rival bidder for $1.4 billion. The House Intelligence Committee has also been exploring real estate transactions related to Russia and other foreign interests, including Deutsche Bank loans to Trump Organization. Oakland City Councilwoman Lynette McElhaney spoke at USC about her son's murder. An emotional McElhaney says her son's death isn't another statistic. She called it a senseless act of violence. Victor McElhaney was a musician who believed music could heal the world. He was one of our shining, rising stars. He was a very special, you know, young man, was a very deep thinker. Police say Victor and his friends left the market when they were approached by a group of people. One of them allegedly shot McElhaney. Haynes says witnesses confirmed the suspects to be three to four Hispanic men in their 20s. Two were believed to be armed. Murder charges have been filed in the case of Trinity Love. The nine-year-old's body was found half-stuffed in a duffel bag in Hacienda Heights. She was last seen with her mother, Takesta Graham, and her boyfriend, Emil Hunt. Graham is a registered sex offender. She was arrested in 2009 for enticing a minor to prostitution. Hunt is charged with Trinity's murder. He's being held on a $2 million bail. Investigators say more information will be released later this week. A UC Irvine student is recovering after being stabbed near a campus housing community. The student was walking her dog around the 10 o'clock Sunday night when she was attacked from behind. The student made it back to her apartment and waited for authorities. Campus police searched the area for two hours but did not find the suspect. 
The suspect is described as a large built man wearing a dark colored hoodie. The father of a UC Irvine freshman who died of alcohol poisoning at a fraternity party blames the fraternity for his son's death. Noah Caleb Domingo was a member of Sigma Alpha Epsilon and he, he was found unresponsive at an off-campus location in January. His father, Dale Domingo, says the fraternity forced Caleb to chug a so-called family drink. An autopsy found the teen died of accidental acute ethanol intoxication. The university says Sigma Alpha Epsilon is closed inf indefinitely. The White House is not backing down on its ambitious border wall dreams. President Trump has just released his proposed budget for 2020. In it, Trump calls for $8.6 billion in border wall funding. Border funding is just one part of his four-part $7 trillion budget proposal. He's calling for cuts in environmental protection and homeland security. New York Republican Tom Reed says Congress has to work together. It's the president's vision as to where we need to go uh, as a country uh, under his proposed budget uh, direction. Now Congress is going to weigh in. We're going to go through the budget negotiations and we'll prioritize in the House of Representatives, work with the Senate and, uh, and come up with a funding bill uh, that reflects those prioritizations that I think we can agree upon. The budget request is more than 300 miles of new border wall double the expected $8.1 billion budget given after the president declared a national emergency last month. The proposal is also asking to fund $2 billion to pay for the sheltering of migrant children. Meanwhile, the Senate is expected to vote on Trump's national emergency declaration later this week. House Democrats introduced the DREAM and Promise Act of 2019. The bill would give millions of young undocumented immigrants and immigrants with temporary protection a pathway to U.S. citizenship. Supporters sang in praise of Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Representative Nydia Velasquez. Democrats are proud to stand today with DREAMers temporary protected status folks and, and deferred enforced departure uh, uh, holders uh, as we take on historic step to protect patriotic men and women. She is an American in every sense, but on paper. And today is the day that we're going to start reversing that. The new requirements would be similar to what DACA recipients now have to meet. The bill would also grant DREAMers conditional permanent resident status for 10 years. Removal proceedings would be canceled if requirements are met. Also, young undocumented immigrants would qualify for federal financial aid for colleges. Anti-Semitic flyers have been posted around Newport Harbor High School. School officials last weekend told police they found at least 10 flyers stamped with swastikas. The school was previously involved with a house party that showed a swastika formed by a red cup and students posing as Nazi soldiers. Newport Harbor's principal says the flyers were removed immediately and that the police are looking into it. A Native American tribe is covering the cost of the funerals for all 23 Alabama tornado victims. The Porch Band of Creek Indians will donate $184,000 to cover the costs. The tribe was originally going to split the cost with another donor. They decided to pay it all when the donor backed out. The check will be given to East Alabama Medical Center Foundation early next week. $38 million has been granted towards the testing of rape kits. 155,000 or more sex assaults evidence kit awaits testing nationwide. The Manhattan District Attorney's Sexual Assault Kit Backlog Elimination Grant Program issued the grants to 32 jurisdictions in 20 states. Testing these kits has led to 186 arrests and 64 convictions. The Manhattan District Attorney Office reports that almost 20,000 DNA profiles were added to the FBI's combined DNA index system, which helps track and bring criminals to justice. The American Civil Liberties Union says schools need more mental health professionals. The group reported more than 14 million students are enrolled in schools without access to counselors or psychologists. The ACLU recommends one counselor for every 250 students, yet only Montana, Vermont, New Hampshire meet the requirements. Recent reports call for more federal, state, and local funding for students' mental health staffing programming. The Oak Park girls basketball had a season like no other. Valley View News' Anissa Plaw reports. The Oak Park girls basketball team had a historic run by reaching the state regional finals. Led by seniors Julia Brahms, Lindsey Garrett, and Abby Mess, the Eagles became the school's only boys or girls basketball team to reach a state regional final. 
Head coach Doris Park Sherman says confidence is key for this team. Our confidence has gone up. Um, we are not as reliant on just one or two players. Everyone wants to step up and everyone wants to have a big game. The Eagles soared this season with a 26-11 record. Three straight home wins in the state playoffs got them to regionals. Team captain Julia Brahms says this team has grown in such a short time. Coming from a 4-21 record my freshman year, it's crazy to see how far we've come and how determined we are to win. The Eagles have much to be proud of. They're the fourth seed in the California Southern Section Division 4AA. Despite falling to Northview in regionals, Oak Park anticipates being back next season. In Oak Park, Anissa Ply, Valley View News. NASA Head Administrator Jim Bridenstein says the first person to set foot on Mars will likely be a woman. Bridenstein was a guest on Science Friday radio show. He didn't identify a specific space traveler, but he said women are at the forefront of the agency's upcoming plans to explore Mars. NASA will also have its first all-female spacewalk at the end of the month. The fight for gender equality is still the main focus on International Women's Day. Valley View News reporter Karina Vargas has more on the story. Get out the way! I get out the way! Hundreds of women and men marched near the federal building in Los Angeles to mark International Women's Day. March 8th celebrates the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. Marchers came out to support gender equality. This march was also part of the third annual International Women's Strike. Hey, everyone. Speakers made calls to action on issues affecting young girls and women all over the world. Glory Martinez is with United Teachers Los Angeles. Let's encourage our girls to love their bodies and their minds. Let's teach our boys to respect both. Participants created art about equality. They also wrote words of encouragement on the street. Banners and posters had messages on abortion, equal pay, and depicting feminism as a strength. For me, it's just um, to uplift my spirit so I don't get tired in the fight, and that's kind of why I made the sign about self-care. The international women's strike happens in more than 50 countries. They want to create a gender-balanced world. The organizations at this march believe they can reach that goal. Gloria Martinez says the fight for women's rights isn't over. Stay ready for the revolution, because without women, there is no revolution. The strike encourages people to bring awareness on issues affecting women all over the world. Reporting in downtown LA, I'm Karina Vargas with Valley View News. Weeks of heavy rain have taken a toll on Southern California. While most Angelinos aren't too happy with the wet weather, it's our beaches that are feeling the overflowing aftermath. Trash from LA streets, it's finding its way to beaches. These six weeks of rain have flooded gutters, usually marked for no dumping, with litter. Gro groups like Surfinder Foundation and Heal the Bay Aquarium host several monthly beaches cleanups, teach people smart consumer practices, and raise awareness. We get an inch of rain in LA, that's about 10 billion gallons of water that rushes from the upper watershed into our storm drains and creeks and straight out to the ocean and see how they can maybe mitigate or cut out some of the things that they're using from things that they might be seeing in uh, in their communities and on our beaches. There are estimates that about 100,000 marine mammals and about a million seabirds are killed every single year. These beach cleanups go on monthly and help protect our beaches and wildfire. Not only is sport fishing important to the California economy, it's also an enjoyable hobby for many people, except for the fish. Valley View News reporter Ethan Hansen has a story. I think I got a little baby on here too. <laughs> Sports fishing is a thriving business with a $4.6 billion impact on California and employs over 33,000 people. But is it good for the environment? Absolutely, because there's a limit on fish that you catch. But a study in scientific report shows that 46% of trash accumulated by the Great Pacific Garbage Patch comes from fishing gear. Channel Island sport fishing captain Don Rowell says independent anglers aren't to blame. There's a lot of conservation efforts that are uh, paid for by fishing licenses, by sale of tackle, by our association. 
environmental researcher Sean Anderson says positive ecological change will occur once people become active in collecting data. He says the more people go fishing, the more people will learn about the environment. I really, really hope people get out and about and do stuff. Part of that means go fishing. One of those people trying deep sea fishing for the first time was 30-year-old Marvin Oriana. Oriana on his first try reeled in a five pound, 10 ounce lingcod, the biggest fish on the boat, an experience he wanted to share with his father. I think he will be absolutely stoked to see uh, the fish I was able to catch on my first time out. Whether it's catching fish or collecting data, the ocean is a much safer place for all inhabitants when sportsmen and scientists are working together. From off the coast of Oxnard, California, I'm Ethan Hansen. Valley View News. Valley View News, Monica with Entertainment News. Thank you, Andrea. Hal Blaine has died. He played on songs for many artists, including Frank Sinatra, Elvis, and the Beach Boys. Blaine played on 40 number one hits and 150 top 10 songs. His drumming could also be heard on the theme songs to Batman and the Partridge Family. Blaine talks about losing friends in 2008 interview with CNN. It's hard to believe, you know, every time you pick up the paper or the phone rings, some incredible, you know, friend has passed away. And we're all heading that way, unfortunately. Blaine's family says he died of natural causes at his home in Palm Desert yesterday. He was 90 years old. Miami Beach Police Department arrested and charged Connor McGregor with strong arm robbery and criminal mischief following an altercation between the celebrity fighter and a fan at the Fountain Blue Hotel. McGregor is accused of smashing the fan's phone, who attempted to take his picture while he was celebrating his mother's birthday. The victim attempted to take a picture of the defendant. With his cell phone, McGregor slapped the victim's phone out of his hand, making it fall onto the floor. He then stomped on the victim's phone several times, damaging it, and walked away with it. McGregor has been released after posting a bond worth $1,200. Actor Jesse Smollett appeared in a Chicago courtroom. Smollett did not have to be in the courtroom, but he chose to attend. A, rep a representative says that Smollett wants to show confidence in his innocence. Both sides agree that cameras would be allowed at the next hearing, which is scheduled for Thursday. Smollett is charged with 16 counts of falsely reporting to the police about being a victim of racist and a hom homophobic act. Hollywood's gone to the circus. Last night's world premiere of Tim Burton's live action Dumbo brought, Dumbo brought out the stars of the film, including Colin Farrell, Eva Green, Michael Keaton, and Danny DeVito. Farrell, who plays Dumbo's caretaker, described the set as being a real life circus. Critics say that the film looks great, but lacks the sincerity and heart that made the animated original a classic. The film is being praised for altering the plot significantly and having a pro-animal rights message. Disney's Dumbo will be in theaters March 29th. Beyonce and Jay-Z are being recognized for achievements outside of the music world. GLAAD announced Mon Monday the power couple will receive their Vanguard Award. GLAAD is a media advocacy organization for people who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or queer. Beyonce and Jay-Z are being recognized for accelerating acceptance. The Carters will be honored at the GLAAD Media Awards later this month. That's all your entertainment news. I'm Monica Campos. More to come on Valley View News. Countries all around the world are grounding Boeing 737 MAX 8 airplanes. More ahead. And the women's U.S. soccer team is suing over gender discrimination. When you're running your own business and taking care of your disabled brother, you tend to learn about responsibility pretty quickly. Let's hear from Landi Sagastume, who's got the latest on international news in our digital media center. The U.S. Embassy in Venezuela has been evacuated. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the risk of cholera and other diseases is growing because of the lack of clean water. Venezuela is on the brink of civil war, making U.S. diplomats vulnerable to attacks by pro-regime groups. Opposition leader 
Juan Guaido formally requested international intervention to prevent President Nicolás Maduro from supplying Cuba with oil. Everyone to help in our time of crisis. Our country is suffering. We insist on whatever humanitarian help we can get, food, medicine, and support. That will bring solutions to this crisis in Miraflores. This gives President Trump the authority to act under international law. Cuba will be forced to withdraw its support or face its own economic implosion. France, Britain, Germany, and Australia have all grounded Boeing 737s. A Boeing 737 MAX 8 airplane crashed in Ethiopia on Sunday, killing all 157 passengers on board. The accident is similar to another crash in Indonesia last October. China and Indonesia grounded the planes the day after the most recent crash. In America, the FAA is saying Boeing has agreed to work with regulators to make the plane safer. Investigators have found the flight recorder and reportedly the pilot issued a distress call just after takeoff from Addis Ababa. Southwest Airlines and American both used the Boeing 737s in their fleet. A young Syrian woman is preparing to swim in the Special Olympics. Nina will represent Bulgaria. She and her family moved from Syria to Bulgaria because of the Syrian war. Despite being born with Down syndrome, her mom says Nina never let criticism get to her. In Syria, people used to, uh, for example, when you go to a restaurant or a place, public place, uh, people used to look at her and she, because she's different, of course. For Olympics, I went to many places, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Egypt, Athens, Damascus. The Special Olympics are this week in Abu Dhabi. That is all for international news. Now back to you in the studio. Now let's get the latest on health with Tia Dunbar. Thank you, Andrea. The USDA issued a recall for Pillsbury unbleached all-purpose flour products because they may be contaminated with salmonella. The lot codes on the products are 8292, best used by April 19th, 2020, and 8293, best used by April 20th, 2020. People are urged to throw away these products or return them for a refund. Pollution in the U.S. isn't distributed equally. Scientists at the University of Minnesota looked at the relationship between what people buy and their exposure to air pollution. They say Caucasians tend to buy more consumer products, and in doing so, they produce more air pollution. Because of where they tend to live, they don't breathe in as much air pollution as other ethnicities. Scientists have long known that African Americans and Hispanics live in neighborhoods with more air pollution. Hispanics breathe in 63% more air pollution than they produce, African Americans 56%. A cigarette a day can double a pregnant woman's chances of losing her baby to sudden infant death syndrome. Scientists at Seattle's Children Research Institute looked at more than 20 million births that had, that had more than 19,000 unexpected deaths. They found women who don't smoke during pregnancy could cut down the death rate by 22%. Researchers say it's important to quit smoking well before pregnancy. Women who quit three months before or during the first trimester still have a 50% higher chance of sudden unexpected infant death. Students under stress are getting a chance to relax. Therapy dog owner Joyce Greenberg says she knows students at the Oasis Center at CSUN appreciate her dog Teton. She works magic. Um, she is what I call, you know, the stress buster. And we see how they change people's lives and how someone can walk into the event being totally stressed out, you know, shoulders up to their ears. And as soon as they interact with the dogs, it all goes away. And this is Teton, and she's a flat-coated retriever with a side of Border Collie. The Oasis Center at the University Student Union provided at least three therapy dogs. People got to pet and cuddle dogs for 90 minutes at the Love on a Leash event designed to reduce stress during midterms. Alejandra Balam says this is perfect for her because it feels like home. I love dogs. I have a dog and she's like an indoor dog and every time I get a chance I hug her. So I, I know these are therapeutic dogs so you can like touch them and they won't really bite you and you can just hug them whenever 
like right now I'm not stressed but because I love dogs like I have to be around them like I like them just because they're calm. The week-long Spring into Wellness program also includes yoga sessions, nutrition counseling, and gardening workshops. Back to you. Coming up on Valley View News, NBA superstar Russell Westbrook gets into a heated exchange with fans in Utah. Also, we know when the Disney and 21st Century Fox merger will be final finalized. Stay with us. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. NBA star Russell Westbrook didn't express remorse after threatening a fan. During the game against the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City, he had a heated exchange with someone sitting courtside. Westbrook later told reporters he was reacting to abuse from fans. What isn't seen in the video is the fan allegedly telling him to get down on your knees. Westbrook told reporters that the comment was racial and inappropriate. The U.S. women's national soccer team has won their discrimination lawsuit against United States Soccer Federation. 28 players in the U.S. squad field institutional gender discrimination. The women athletes argued that the men in soccer have continuously been overpaid compared to women. The suit was filled with International Women's Day in federal court in Los Angeles. The World Championships say they are happy to clear the path for future fights against gender equality. Here's Lisa Rodriguez with social media, tech and health news. President Trump took to Twitter to complain about modern technology. He said modern planes have become too complex to fly and they rely too much on technology rather than on the skills of expert pilots. He said simpler is far better. He was responding to the controversy over the Boeing 737s involved in two crashes in the recent months. The cause of the latest crash in Ethiopia has not been determined. Mickey Mouse and Homer Simpson will soon be part of the same family. Disney and 21st Century Fox say their merger is official next week. Disney's purchase includes Hulu, FX, NetGeo, and a few other entertainment channels. Some employees at the affected companies will get their final checks soon. Disney says at least 5,000 people will be laid off. This month, Apple is expected to make an announcement about a TV streaming and Apple News service. Some Apple fans believe the event may also unveil retooled AirPods, a new entry-level iPad, and the AirPower wireless charging pad. The company's stock increased by 3.5% this week. Apple called the event its showtime. That was also the term it used in 2006 when it introduced Apple TV. That's all for social media and tech news. Back to you. That's all for us at Valley View News. Thank you for watching. I'm Andrea Tanches. And I am Leslie Estrada. For news any time of the day, go to our website sundial.csun.edu. See you next week.